Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is May's update for where we are in the build. And you notice something behind me. I have a, a mess, but I have build tables free, which means uh, oh, there's, there's air underneath the plane, which is uh, the first time that that has happened. So let's take a quick look to see everything that's going on and uh, where we're at. Okay, so most importantly, the plane is almost on the ground. And when I say almost, uh, I've got these dollies here. And these dollies I made specifically because of the table height. So the tables that I was on were about an inch lower than these dollies. So the plane's actually a little higher uh, than it was, but it allowed me to uh, uh, get cleared. So I've got everything cleared up. Uh, there's still cleanup work that I need to do. Um, this nut is torqued, uh, but I haven't put the uh, indicator, the torque seal on it yet. So that's something I got to clean up. Uh, I still have to do uh, some rivets here, which I couldn't get to while the table was on it. So those I'll get to. Um, obviously, the air duct is in place, and so is the fuse box. There's still a lot of work to be done on the front firewall. Um, the wheels. Uh, these guys look amazing. I still have to put the cotter pin in it. I'm still a little concerned about some of the angle. Um, but... The shim looks correct, and so you can see the shim sitting in there. So the thick side to the top, the thin side to the bottom, that's how we got it. The gap in the leg itself looks pretty good. Um, so that I'm comfortable with. It's just a, I got a positive camber to the wheel, and I presume that now that that's normal, but uh, that's got to get done. Um, I have a, a lock nut here, which basically requires a uh, one and three quarter a socket that I don't have so I snugged it the best I could with what I had but I still got to take that up to torque and I've got to put the cotter pin in so that's something that I've got left to do on that side and on this side uh, there's a safety wire that see this little this little channel right here there's a safety wire that goes all the way around and this is of course is my that's my brake disc right there I have my brakes on the other side uh, but, um, that's something that I got to do. I also, uh, just spray painted the, this part of the leg, which I would never be able to get to again. And so that's just got a flat black on it just to kind of match. And of course the, that's, of course, powder's sealed and, and, and done. Um, this leg was also the trickiest to get the steel braided cable through, and that's the one that's got it left in there because I had to take a, a reamer up this side, and it was basically there was basically a blockage right here, and so I took a reamer through, and then uh, I was able to to get what I needed to, but that took a little bit of work uh, to get that side done. The other side moved freely, so. Of the braided steel cable I have, that's um, where I left it. Uh, the guys at Midwest Panel Builders, uh, they awesomely provided me both a, a drill template and the um, the mounting bracket for the CPC plug to go to the wing. So I did that uh, this last week, and then I just put out epoxy in, and I also riveted it. And then I made a plate... And this is, of course, the PO static, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take one of these out, and I've got uh, red paint, so I'll, I'll paint one of these red. Sorry, it's a PO and AOA. Um, so uh, I'll get those done. Uh, so I made bulkhead fittings there. Um, I'll probably do a bulkhead fitting for uh, the braided steel, and I'll probably do like a a 90 and go in through one of these, and that'll be super easy. To, to get done, but that's on the list to do. Um, I gotta order parts though for that. 
the fuel side, um, I just have to, and they're going to get grommeted. I'm not going to do anything fancy on that because uh, I don't want uh, a, another fitting uh, that might leak right underneath my legs. So I'm just going to have that straight and not really mess with, uh, with that. Uh, inside, I've got the... Uh, I've got the interior skin just laying in place. It's not riveted at all. Um, as you can tell, I did pull out the uh, the panel because uh, the skin was giving me a hard time, and uh, I still need to put the the ducts in. And thank you to the guys who responded to my Facebook post as well. I'm gonna get uh, those uh, uh, Silka ordered uh in the next week or so uh to uh put that in and all that now uh what else is happening uh table wise yeah i got um a mess but really what's going to happen is um the four tables are going to get put back together and they're going to go over on this side as you can tell like this this crate down here that has to go out and it's going to happen next weekend because i don't have time this week um but next weekend this crate's going to go out it has the canopy in it and some other fiberglass pieces like uh the the wheel pants and or splats uh, you know whatever sling wants to call them but they're uh in that crate uh the windows are in that crate uh but yeah most importantly <laughs> the canopy itself and the front windshield, of course, are in that crate. So um, I got to get that out because I need to do fiberglass for it because I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but I got the switch panel in from uh, from Midwest as well. And so, yeah, this is, this is what I have. Um, uh, so I've got uh, a little bit of work to do to make the panel itself, but I'm going to put uh, obviously four screws in and then i've got uh, these two ring guards uh to help find the switches when i'm not looking as well but they're just kind of like positional they're uh, not really weight bearing kind of ring guards but they're they're there just for me to be able to find the the right lights when i'm going forward and uh, they they provided me the the switches and all that kind of stuff so yeah these are these are good to go and again, I'll, I'll get this in uh, as soon as I can do fiberglass on the canopy itself. i got to think about the interior paint color for, for the canopy too. So um, i got a little, bit of, a little bit of thinking to do on, on that front. Uh, this bin is all the uh, rivet stems for uh, the fuselage. So that's what we got so far on there. Um, I still have to do... I still have to do this part. I still have the luggage door to do. This stuff hasn't really been touched uh, since. Uh, I do have a, a stand here. This is going to obviously move back. Uh, this crate is the uh, upholstery crate that's um, that I'm going to leave packed. Well, I may empty this crate as well uh, next week and just uh, get all the crates out of here. Um, but this thing is in really uh, good shape. I have some uh, some video clips uh, as well, guys, that I'll put in, in this video uh, uh, talking about uh, how this got connected. And there's some other uh, clips as well for you guys. Um, so let's roll those clips now and then uh we'll come back and talk about uh what we've got going on for june let's do a little fuselage insulation test you can tell where i uh have put the insulation and stuck it against the fuselage and where I haven't yet, by the way it sounds. Kind of cool, right? All right, so the other day uh, we did 
the landing gear legs, and they were interesting to get in place. Um, the bottom bolts went really well, really easy. The top bolts, uh, those are a little bit more painful to do. So a little bit of work involved in smashing those into place, but uh, we got it done and uh, that worked pretty good. Now, uh, as you can tell, uh, this piece uh, is not done. I had this cleat coat in place and I'm glad I did because there is no way this piece is gonna be coming out. <laughs> Uh, so after having that thing in after the fact would not be ideal, but you need it in before the fact and you need it loose because uh, you can tell the bottom skin is in here already, but um, it has to lay under this so uh, and there's rivets through it. So uh, there's a little bit of work involved in making that happen, but uh, my recommendation is do what I did, click uh, this thing in place, and then deal with that landing leg, and then you can loosen this back up and have it hanging free, and then put in uh, that bottom skin, and you can tell I, I put sealant on it, so it's got silica sealant on it, but uh, got that going on, and then... Yeah, then you can deal with everything else. Now, I'm short a, a braided line, but I've got it in on this side right now. And this side is, um, I tried it on both sides. This one's super free, easy. The other side, when I tried it in there, uh, it was pretty stuck. And of course, mine's braided because it's a Behringer kit. Um, but the, the other side was blocked on the bottom, so I had to go up through the hole and kind of ream it out and so there's a there's a hole i can't even see where it is right now there's a hole right here and uh you kind of have to ream that out so you kind of ream it upwards and it'll take care of it but i had to use a, a little reamer bit and some effort to kind of push it in and, and make that work uh, but that's, uh, so today's project, I'm just going to put the sides, uh, finish the side stiffener plates, and then I'll come back to doing something inside the plane itself. But, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get close to putting this plane on the ground shortly. All right. Engine mount is on. The front fork is on. It's hanging out, looking pretty good. So, I think that was a successful day right there. I am probably going to regret not doing these riv nuts, but I also don't have the firewall forward kit in where those exist. So, I guess I could steal from other parts of the fuselage kit, but uh, that's currently... The state of the union on that now the um parachute ones they're still loose um obviously i'm gonna have to back the cave i'm gonna have to back the front ones off and get the parachute on when i get the canopy secured but for right now this is good and you know whatever if i have to replace the nut to get a new lock nut then i will do that that's not a that's not a big deal in this world right now all right that's where we're at all right so hope you enjoyed those clips and hopefully there's some parts in there that you find useful as well particularly like when you start thinking about attaching uh the undercarriage and all that um june so uh what i plan to do obviously is get this plane the last eight inches to the ground uh, so hopefully that'll happen on Saturday. Uh, I have a friend who's got a cherry picker and we're going to bring that in just to help, uh, with the front end. So we're going to attach the cherry picker to that, uh, the center carry through spar and we'll attach it at two points and that'll just give us a little bit of lift that we need. And then we'll support that tail 
to make sure that uh, we get it in the right spot. And then we'll remove those wheel dollies and set the plane down on its main gear and then re-support the tail. So that'll be uh, one day because, um, again, all these crates and, and tables need to get reorganized and put in the spot. And then while I have the help, I need to get the canopy set on the table so that I can start looking at the work that needs to be done to it, which includes uh, the fiberglass work and uh, again, that switch panel uh, installed. And, you know, by that point, um, we'll probably be close to end of June, uh, but I gotta pick a paint color for the inside of the canopy and I haven't, haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do there. Um, but my goal is to, uh, the only spray painting that I'm gonna do will likely be the inside of the canopy. I'm not going to do the outside of the plane. That's going to go uh, for a more professional person. Uh, but the inside, uh, that's something that I can probably handle. Um, and, you know, has to be done because there's some parts of that canopy that are going to be really hard to reach, like some crevice nooks that when the panel comes in uh, is going to make that um, really uh, a challenge to have any other color. So I'm going to need to do that uh, soon. And we'll see from that perspective. Um, what else? Uh, there's a lot of little things that have to happen inside, but uh, once it's on its wheels, um, I'll be able to uh, finish up the second video for the panel install. And uh, that'll include laying in the panel harness itself. So I'll make that video hopefully uh, in June. And then, um, gosh, we're right on top of Oshkosh. And so I plan to be on Oshkosh. Hopefully uh, you guys will be in Oshkosh as well. I'm going to be doing my traditional sling tour, and I'll be looking for all the different sling aircraft that are there, and I'll do walk-arounds for all of those. So hopefully we'll have some repeats. Hopefully we'll have some new ones that we haven't seen before. And, uh, yeah, I'll provide you guys videos so you can see the different paint schemes and all the kind of stuff that people are doing out there for uh, for that. So look forward to seeing uh, the next couple of videos from me. Again, like we're getting super close here. This fuselage is now, you know, the same as it comes from, uh, well, I guess a little bit further ahead in some regards from a quick build fuselage. So we're back on track on that concern. And, um, you know, there's a lot of like cool little things uh, as well that, uh, that we'll take care of. So, uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoy it and, uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. All right.